a sensory stimulus refers to any object that the children can observe and experience. They might be able to smell it or hear it or feel it and that's giving them a basis for their scientific investigations. A sensory stimulus doesn't necessarily give the children any information, it's more likely to pose questions that they are looking for the answers to, so it might be hearing a sound, what could it be, they're then making predictions based on something that's delivered to them, put in front of them, before then they start investigating to answer their questions to solve their problem. So as a stimulus, just to get the children really engaged and really excited about their learning today, we used a very tightly rolled up foil ball inside of which was an ice ball with an alien inside. To set the scene at the beginning of the lesson, I incorporated the sound effect of the hailstone and they had to guess what it was and that prompted lots of discussion as to what might be inside the foil parcel, who might have landed and how we're going to get them out. When the children first picked up the ice balls, they obviously used their clues, they were using their senses to feel it was cold, it was hard, it started dripping a little bit, so it gave them clues that when they held it, their hands was making the ice melt. <gasps> oh, I wonder what these are that's just dropped down out of the sky. Oh, I wonder what they could be. We're going to make a prediction what's inside, okay? What do you think might be inside the foil ball that's just fallen out of the sky? <laughs> I organised the lesson by arranging the children to mix ability groups and so the children had um, different ideas that they could share with their buddies. Everybody's opinion was okay, nothing was wrong, nothing was right, so they could, could have a go at sharing their ideas in a risk-free environment. To get the children talking, uh, I set up a true or false uh, or don't know uh, post to work on their, on their table where the children had to sort statements into true, false or they didn't know as a team and then go and find out for sure. So at the investigation station where the children got a chance to choose which resources they wanted to test, there was a lot of discussion about which resource they should choose and a lot of negotiation being done between the teams to, to choose that individual one thing they were going to test. So I want one thing to make it a fair test so that you're going to make sure the alien escapes out of the ice as quickly as possible. That is your problem. <laughs> So what do you need to do just to be sure that it's making the difference? There's an ice inside the warm water so when the ice melts it turns into cold water. I think some of their opinions had changed and some of their predictions changed by the end of the lesson. They saw that the torch, for example, didn't work or the bubble wrap didn't work or the, you know, the blue tissue didn't work and this obviously uh, addressed their misconceptions. So if the children can verbalise obviously what they're saying to each other, it's much easier to record and interpret what they're actually thinking as well. The children at the end of the lesson obviously show that they had moved on with their learning because they then could go back to their uh, previous predictions and see if they actually were correct or which if they were incorrect as well. If you ice into warm water, it would melt. children don't always have a written outcome for the lesson but we feel that's fine because actually the talk was very valuable and the children gained a lot of learning from talking to each other. The children are encouraged to talk all the time, they talk in their buddies, they talk in their groups, in different ability groups and we talk as a class as well to discuss ideas openly. I think the benefits of talk is that the children can obviously show me their misconceptions and then I can address them within the lesson straight away. They also can build their confidence by sharing their ideas with their buddy or their small group. 
and it gives them a chance to actually say, well, I think this is wrong because, and really show me what they're, what they're thinking. Since we've implemented talk across the curriculum um, and discussion within lessons, uh, we're finding that the children are really enjoying their learning, very much engaged, very confident to put their ideas across and have their say and to, and to consider other people's ideas. So the purpose of using a sensory stimulus is to really capture their children's attention, to really engage them, to give them a, a tangible, if you like, purpose for their investigations, something that they can feel, they can touch, they can really get to grips with in a physical way.